Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. I'm transforming my whole house into a haunted house for Halloween. I'm making a bunch of DIY props and styling some store-bought decor to really set the scene for this haunted house party that I'm throwing later on in the month. And I'm decorating the outside of my house so I can set the vibe for the trick-or-treaters when they come on Halloween night. So if you want to see how I pull everything together, just keep on watching. If you haven't seen part one, definitely go watch it. I'll have it linked in the description and everything. I show in that video a haul of all types of decorations and DIY supplies that I bought and just kind of set the scene for what I'm planning on doing. So far, I have made a little bit of progress with setting up a few of the store-bought decorations around my house, but I still have more stuff to set up and a lot more DIYs to make. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. For these eyeballs that I also just got from Walmart, I got them to go in this jar because I have like this little setup going here, but this needs something spooky inside of it. The problem is the way that they're weighted, it like wants to be facing down, which is annoying. I want you to be able to see the iris. Okay, the next thing I wanna go ahead and put into place are these bleeding tapered candles. I think I'm just gonna put them in these candle holders, which are actually like real pieces of decor from my real house, but they just happen to go with the theme. But in order in order to give it the bleeding look, I need to light them and let them start melting a little bit. I also almost forgot that I also have these candle holders that I got from the Dollar Tree for $1.25 each. I put them in here for now because I don't want to get red wax dripping on my nice candlestick holders over there. I'm letting them melt in the Dollar Tree ones for now. But you can see that it's white on the outside but red on the inside. So when it drips, it gives it a drippy blood effect. Very vampire. So I'm gonna just like let these drip for a little bit so it can have that used drippy look and then I'll just like set them out for decor and I probably will never ever light them again. Okay, so here is my jar of eyeballs. I had to really like shove them in there a certain way, even use a little piece of tape to like arrange them how I wanted them. And then here are my bloody candles after letting them melt for a little bit. Nice little spooky display. Deciding what I'm gonna do with that. In the meanwhile, I got this pack of fake wooden boards from Walmart for like three or four dollars and I want to board up a window of my door. I think putting it on the outside, I wish they were double-sided. They really dropped the ball with that one because then it could show from both sides of the glass. But I think putting it on the outside makes the most sense, you know? Because if you were boarding up some windows, you would do it from the outside. So let's see. I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because it's like, what are you boarding up? What are you doing? In reality, what would be the meaning of this? But I think it looks spooky. A little boarded up window moment, you know? Then I have this, which is also from Walmart. I was gonna like put a little command hook and hang this maybe on the outside. I don't really have another good place, like, cause it's a welcome sign. So you wanna be welcomed into the home, but I don't really have like another good place to hang it besides the front door. I kinda wanna hang it outside the front door. I'm gonna take some of this. This is from Walmart. They also had it at Target and like everywhere else. Creepy drape for this lamp. I slightly rearranged this stuff. I'm gonna end up draping a bunch of this stuff everywhere. I still want my house to be functional in the meantime, so I'm not putting up too many things just yet. I'm gonna put up more decorations like just for the party, but there are a few things that I can definitely do right now. I really wanna switch these out for just like some black sticks. Like if I could find some dead branches and spray paint them black and just have some little tall branches coming out of here, that would be perfect. I don't have trees, so I don't have any dead branches in my own yard. I even tried to just like buy some fake ones in the store. I couldn't find what I was looking for. I'll keep looking, but I really want to put some different like dead, spooky, or haunted. Like this is looking too normal. So we need to replace these and that'll really tie this whole little vignette together. Then we have this other vignette over here. I moved these two objects over here because I felt like I needed to like spread out my frog around the house, so I think I'm gonna end up using these over here. Okay, I have these gold candle holders that again are just normal, regular, everyday home decor that I already had and these regular candlesticks, but I think they do really go with the spooky vibe, actually. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's it's giving vampires. 
Okay, so I have an extra empty one of these like little cookie jars from my pantry and I saw something kind of like this on Pinterest. I had gotten all these like skulls and stuff from the Dollar Tree. I don't have any little, like a bunch of small skulls would be good for this. <laughs> it looks like he's like in distress. I could even put like some yucky looking water in it to make it really look like a specimen jar. dive into the DIYs today and try to knock out as much of that as I can. But first, I still have not made or sent out official invitations for this party and it is October 6th. I like to send out the invitations with plenty of time, you know, in advance because I have friends who come from out of town. They need to make travel plans and babysitting plans and all types of plans. So if I want people to be able to show up, I gotta give them a good heads up. So I really need to send out these invitations like today. I haven't even started on them. The past two years for my Halloween party, I've used Cameo to hide certain people to make like little videos to go with the digital invitations. First year it was a 2000s party so I had Soulja Boy. Second year it was a movie themed Hollywood party so I had Kel from Kenan and Kel. This year it's a haunted house theme so I looked on Cameo to see if there was any like I don't know actors who have played vampires or something that would go with the haunted house theme. I'm not really finding anything so I don't think I'm gonna be doing the celebrity invite this year just because it it doesn't really like go with the theme. Like if anything, I would want somebody to be like dressed up like a vampire, dressed up like a zombie or something and make a little video. But like, I don't know. I just feel like that's not really the move this year. So what I am thinking though, is I can record my voice and then I can go in on the editing software and change my voice to sound like a monster voice. I'm gonna try it. And then I can use that as like for the invitation video. You're invited to Raven's Haunt house party and then if I put a voice effect on it you're invited to Raven's haunted house party <laughs> Okay, I think I might use that. I think I might use that. I'm gonna like say all of the information for the party and like make a little video and a little graphic on Canva to go with it. I always use Canva to make custom graphics and invitations and stuff. And then I use Evite as like the actual link where you click through an RSVP and say how many people are coming with you so I can keep track of like how many people. Evite is really good to like keep the guest list organized and keep track of who's coming. But I always like to make a special a little video or graphic just to make it cool. So let me do that and I'm gonna show you. Okay, I just finished the recording. I downloaded like spooky, scary background noises and stuff. Look, listen to it, I'm very proud of this. <laughs> I regret to inform you that you are officially invited to Raven's Haunted House Party. Put together your creepiest costume and join us if you dare for a scary good time. Ladies, bring your witches. Fellas, bring your foes. This gathering will have plenty of booze. So please, no little trick-or-treaters. Unless, of course, you don't want them anymore. <laughs> I just put that together in like 20 minutes. The All the talking part is my voice with, you know, the voice change, the little boo and the laugh. I actually found that, like downloaded it and it just so happened to like sound the same as my voice. So it all goes together. Then I added like thunder and lightning, scary ambient noise, the little witches cackle, the children screaming. Cause I was like, ladies bring your witches. Get it? Fellas, bring your foes. Witches and foes, you get it. I said no little trick-or-treaters, no kids. This is an adult party. Unless of course you don't want your kids anymore because the scary monsters can eat them for you. You get it. Okay, so now I've gotta make like the graphic that goes with it and that will be like playing in the background. So Canva has a bunch of, if you just do an invitation template and then you search in their template for whatever you want, whether it be beach, pool, Halloween, haunted house, vampire, they have a lot of like pre-made things where you can just go in and change the text to whatever you need to say. Boom, there you go. I tend to like to customize it. So I might take details from a few of these different ones on here and then kind of mix and match and combine them together and add my own little custom details to just make it my own. So I definitely want like the haunted house element in the background. I think I might change this font here because it's not as, you know, scary. It looks a little bit more childish. So I might take a font off of this other one 
and maybe take some of these other details and like drag it onto this one just to kind of combine it. Same thing with this one and then kind of change the colors. So let's see what I come up with. Okay, I just finished the invitation video. I'm gonna play it for you now. I regret to inform you that you are officially invited to Raven's Haunted House Party. Put together your creepiest costume and join us if you dare for a scary good time. Ladies, bring your witches. Fellas, bring your foes. This gathering will have plenty of booze. So please, no little trick-or-treaters. Unless, of course, you don't want them anymore. Boom! <laughs> So now I'm going to send that video out to all of my guests along with the Pinterest link to this board that I created with costume ideas. I want everybody to dress up in, you know, scary, spooky type costumes to go with the theme. I mean, they can wear whatever they want, honestly, but I think it would be cool if everybody specifically chose more spookier type costumes. So I put together a Pinterest board of all these different costume ideas for guys, girls, singles, couples, some that are just like quick, easy DIY, some that are more detailed, Detailed, some that are like not as scary for people who are not into that but like still go with the theme I just wanted people to have options so I'm actually gonna make sure that I check and see if there's like any more ideas that I want to add all right so for the giant candlesticks these are the basic materials and so this is gonna be the tray I'm doing two <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just going to trim and arrange these as needed to be the candles on the tray. I'm just gonna attach them with hot glue. So this is the general idea, a bunch of giant candles on a tray. Now to make them look like they've been melted, I'm gonna use hot glue to add the drippy texture. I also have a caulking gun left over from a previous project that can give that goopy look. And I thought it might be better to use some of this instead of trying to use so much hot glue. <laughs> So I have all of my hot glue drips, really thick drips going around the rim and then some drips dripping all the way down on all of them. And then the caulking going around the edge of this one. I ran out of caulking, I need to get some more to finish this one. That's kind of the main idea to make it look drippy and used and waxy and creepy. I'm gonna paint the whole thing black, like the plate, everything black. But I just wanted to show you to make it look like it's a real candle. Dollar Tree has these little LED tea lights, but they also have the stick version. And most people use these and just kind of like sit them on top, but that doesn't look very realistic to me because it's like you've got this whole little circle part just like poking out and the hole on the inside of the noodle is not big enough to shove it in there, but these ones fit in there. So to make it look like the candle is lit. Now, obviously this is too tall for like these little short ones. Can't use that. So I'm just kind of experimenting with how I can like the light up part. Honestly, I don't need every single candle to be lit to give the effect. Some of the candles can just be not lit. Honestly, you can do this and just have it as a decoration without any of them being lit because they're just like melted used candles. They don't have to necessarily be lit. Those are kind of like two options to make them light up. You could of course put real candles in there as well and light them, but that's definitely a fire hazard. This is plastic. The hot glue is gonna melt. I would not recommend that unless you're just gonna do it quickly for like a picture or something, but definitely something like this. idea or I kind of saw it on Pinterest let me not lie I thought if I take these plastic skulls and these plastic bowls maybe I could make a little thingy like the thing you're seeing on the screen now okay for the top 
this bowl actually fits on the head like a little hat or like, you know, the little lace veil. And then that helps me balance the top one on it. Okay. <laughs> Play. So you can see like this is more balanced with the bottom one, so it's overall more balanced. Purr. And once again, paint the whole thing black. Okay, so Zaya helped me add some razzle dazzle to the border of the plate. Some spiders and gems, just for some fun. So here's pretty much the finished product and the other matching one over here. And then like I said, I will figure out how I wanna make them light up depending on which Dollar Tree lights I wanna use and stuff like that. Or I might just not have them light up because I mean, they're cute as is. I have them here on the table for now. And then I also included my little candle holder, I put a candle in there. Turned out pretty cool, if I do say so myself. It's very lightweight plastic from the Dollar Tree, but it looks like a real thing. So I just put all that together as like a big long tablescape for now. Now for my next project, I'm gonna make these paper bats. I bought some glitter cardstock paper, this chunkier glitter that's like really reflective, this finer glitter that's also pretty reflective, but just in a different way. Way. Then I also have just plain black cardstock paper and I'm going to use my handy dandy Cricut to cut out the shapes for me. The first time I did this, I did not have my own Cricut machine and I just drew the shape and cut it out with scissors, which is totally doable, but I wanna make a lot of these. So the Cricut cutting them for me is really gonna come in handy. So on the Cricut software, I just searched bat. They have tons of stuff you can use just already on here and there's like different little versions. So I'm actually gonna do like a few different ones just to have variety and see how many I can cut out with like a few sheets of paper. So here's all my little bat shapes. I'm doing slightly different sizing as well because I just want like a variety. Okay, first test cut. Cute, so cute. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these. Okay, so I'm gonna get started with some of these glitter bats that I cut out. I'm still gonna cut out more and just do some with regular paper, but I'm gonna start with these. I have these little sticky glue dots. They're like balloon dots, double-sided sticky things. You can also use double-sided tape, whatever is not gonna damage the surface. And I wanna make it look like the bats are like flying out of the fireplace and like maybe circling around the TV or something. So I'm gonna start like placing a few. So we've got some going on just plain black cardstock paper, different sizes, different styles. This is working really well. The only thing that did not work was this thicker, chunkier glitter paper. I could have probably made it work, but I just messed it up. And now that I messed up the paper, like I'm just kind of over it. So I'm just not gonna use this paper for this. Just sticking to the thinner, finer glitter, which worked out really well. And then the plain. So I'm just putting one little sticky dot on the back of each one. It's just paper so it doesn't need anything crazy and I want it to be easy to take off later as well. And voila, here are my bats flying out of my fireplace. I think it turned out super cute. This little thing with it. Some of them are glittery, some of them are not. Cute. I'm doing the burning bones to go in the fire pit. So I'm using the lid to the fire pit to trace out the size for like the pile to fit inside the fire pit. <laughs> Okay, now this is dry. I'm going in with some red first. And then black. up the garage door so it could be dim in here. Let's test it out. I'm nervous that the lights are not gonna show through. <gasps> oh my God, it looks perfect. I was not expecting 
expecting it to look that good. It actually looks like what it's supposed to look like. That's so cool. And it's gonna be dimly lit. It's gonna be a nighttime party. So it'll be like dark around it, which will make it look even better. I love that. That's so cool. Oh my God. Okay, cool. Okay, so here is what this big spider web is looking like over my front door. Only had to use a few hooks and they actually ended up sticking really well, so that worked out. I was struggling with it. I think it was last year I tried to do this and I couldn't figure out what would stick to this textured wall, but I found a certain type of adhesive that works. Put some different spiders in there. I took the light bulb out of that main light right there because I wanna see if I can get like a spooky light bulb to replace it with, so we'll see about that. So I found these red light bulbs at Home Depot. I got two of them. Let's see if they work. Okay, obviously it's the middle of the day, but I think it'll look really spooky at night. We'll have to test it out. And then I got a second one for this lamp on the console table, just to, you know, add some ambiance to this overall spooky setup. Okay, so I wanna give y'all a tour of what all the decorations are looking like as of now. So I have my cemetery with some zombie hands poking out of some of the graves. These ones are glow in the dark. So I have these here, the little skull fence going across the cemetery. Then we have the Bones family, the skeleton family. This is supposed to represent me, Bougie, and Zaya. I have a hula hoop. I was standing up at first, but I kept falling over, so I'm sitting down now. And Zaya is riding the tricycle. I use zip ties to hold it in place so it wouldn't like blow over in the wind. And then the next thing you see is the front gate, which I added some razzle dazzle to the top. I added these bats, which are with magnets and then I added this little chain to make it look like it's like locked up and spooky. Then you see these signs and the plants. I have my lanterns which have strobe lights inside the lanterns which I can turn on at night to make a cool lighting effect. And then I have these little black pumpkins. I left the lanterns dirty and dusty just how they were because I feel like dirty and dusty looks more haunted. Normally I would clean them before I put them out. I feel like the dirt works so we're gonna leave it dirty. I put up the spider webbing here with all different types of spiders. I have my little fake wooden boards on the glass and then I added these little spooky light bulbs which I might change that because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's like why do you have light bulbs hanging on your door like what is the meaning but they are sound activated. <laughs> So they will make that sound and flicker the light whenever activated by sound. So any loud sound will make it do that. As well as my little sound activated tarantula that I hung above the door is also sound activated, but it takes like, you have to clap your hands or yell really loud or slam the door or something to activate both of those things. So it just falls down. It doesn't fall down that much, but it's enough for you to notice and maybe be creeped out a little bit. I didn't want it to fall too low and like smack somebody in the head or anything. And then it just winds itself back up. It takes a while to wind up. I wish it, the string was longer and I wish it wound itself back up faster, but hey, we gonna work with what we got. And then the last thing that I added here is the red light bulb, which looks really spooky at night. It just makes this whole area have that red spooky lighting to it. and then mixed in with the strobe lights here. It gives a nice spooky effect. I'll show you guys that on the night of the party. Then we have this little setup here with the blood splatter. I added some spider webbing to the top of the mirror and some little spiders. I have gray spooky fabric here. I ended up kind of switching that out because I thought it contrasted better. Candlesticks, spider, these little things, a little spooky bowl with some eyeballs and a rat. Then we have the stairs. I added some of the black 
black tattered fabric to the stair railing. I still wanna add more stuff to the stair railing, like more spider webs and stuff, but it's kind of impractical to have it up for everyday use because people obviously need to like use the stair railing and it, it'll just get messed up. So I'm gonna put more stuff on there for the actual night of the party. And then we have this table, which has spider webs, the tattered fabric, some bugs, a bird skeleton. I ended up putting this little sign here. Welcome to the afterlife. Spider webs on this pot with some spiders. Then on this painting, I added spider webs on top. Spiders, I was trying to put spider webs on all of the like tops of everything because I feel like realistically that's where it would be. Then walking into the living room, I have my spider web table runner on the coffee table, which is from Amazon. A little spider, a little skull. I attached this bat to the fan. And so the bat is like flying in the middle of the living room. I think this looks really cute. And from this perspective, when you're sitting on the couch watching TV, this bat kind of like goes in line with these bats, which is kind of a cool effect. Then we have some tattered fabric here, some more spider web and spiders here on the top of this painting. I definitely plan on adding a lot more stuff to this glass here, but that's gonna be more so like just for the night of the party, so I'm waiting on that. I added spider webs to these lights. And then over here on the dining table, I added the tattered fabric to all of the chairs just because I had a lot of it left over. Added a black table runner. I have my DIY jumbo candlesticks here with this beautiful border that Zaya put on here. And then I added some extra bugs. And I have my little Dollar Tree candlesticks that will make it light up. And then my Dollar Tree skull candle holder tower thing. And there is spider webbing all over over this light fixture as well with a big fuzzy spider hanging down. And then there's a few little Easter eggs elsewhere. I added this guy popping out of this plant. I added this spider on the fruit basket. I have this little like specimen jar, which I think I wanna like put like green water in here and maybe put some little eyeballs in here and just make it extra spooky and maybe make a few more of them because I have some more extra glass jars like this. Oh, I do have a few extra little random things. I have these things which I just hung on my office door because I didn't know where else to put them right now and then I have these ones in this bathroom which I have more that I want to add in here like more of those types of things and then I was playing around with this other set of stickers which I figured out do not look very realistic on glass like on a mirror or on a window it shows the border a lot so it doesn't look realistic but it looks a lot more realistic on something like this like a solid color thing like not clear glass so I just ended up putting that that one there. So I have a whole pack of these that I'm gonna put all over the house, but I don't wanna put them now because that's more like actually scary and realistic and just for the party. I don't wanna have it up all the time and like freak Zaya out. But for now, I put them in here where she doesn't ever come in here, so it's fine. Okay, so I'm working on the wine bottle candle DIY. My mom gave me these wine bottles and if they're like different colors or if they're just clear to make them look more spooky, you could just spray paint them black. I don't think I'm gonna end up needing these extra ones. I'm just gonna use these darker tinted ones and I think I'm just gonna leave them how they are. I don't feel like I need to spray paint them, but I am just removing the labels. This one I already removed and I'm just using the blow dryer technique. So put your blow dryer on high heat and it'll melt the adhesive behind the sticker so you can peel it off really clean. Just get something to get it going on the corner. If it's not coming up clean, you need to put more heat. Usually I can get it off in one piece. This one was being a little difficult, but you can just heat up these extra spots and scrape them off. I also have these smaller olive oil bottles, which have the labels printed directly on the glass. There's probably a way that I could get that off, maybe with like acetone or something, but I think I am gonna go ahead and just spray paint these black to just cover that up easier. Then I'm just going to place the bottles on a baking sheet with some wax paper. This is so that when I let the wax melt, it can fall onto here. And then I'm taking these red unscented candles from the Dollar Tree. You get two for $1.25. I thought red would look nice and spooky. They're unscented, so it won't be like overwhelming when I light these.
Okay, so what I've learned from this DIY after letting the candles melt for a couple hours is that if you want a lot of wax buildup on the bottle, you're gonna have to melt like a whole first candle just to get the wax buildup, then put a second candle for the actual candle because just from this one candle melting halfway, it didn't give that much drippage, but I don't have any more candles. Maybe I'll go back and get more candles to make it more drippy, but this is the effect you're gonna get just from one candle. I think they still look cool. They still look spooky and when they're mixed into everything else, it'll look fine, but just a little heads up. It takes a lot of candles to get that much wax build up. It is October 10th and so there are still 19 days until my Halloween party and then a couple of more days after that until actual Halloween when the trick-or-treaters and stuff come. So we still have quite a while. So that's why I keep saying like there's certain things I don't want to put up just yet because in the meantime, you know, Zaya still has to live in this house and not be scared of her own house. I still have people coming in and out of my house that like I don't want to freak them out and I don't want them to be like, what the hell? So I'm saving a lot of stuff just for the night of the party. And I'm just kind of like, you know, trickling it out, you know, in the meantime. Oh, there's one other thing that I didn't show you guys. Well, I guess I did show you guys earlier, but my little fire pit burning bones, I ended up putting it right there on the coffee table because I think I am going to incorporate the patio as part of the like party area. And then I still have all of this DIY supply of mess left out because I'm still working on more DIYs. I have a few main DIYs that I still want to do. I really want to do this DIY, which is a life-size spooky grandfather clock. Wish me luck, but I've started to collect materials and recycled boxes and stuff for that. It's like all made out of like cardboard and styrofoam and just recycled materials. So we'll see. And then I want to do this DIY, which uses balloons and white yarn and little plastic spiders. So I have all the stuff for that as well to make the spider egg nests, whatever you call it. And then the last main one that I want to do is this DIY where you take a bunch of recycled materials and you wrap it in black trash bags with duct tape to make it look like it's a dead body wrapped up. But that one I'm definitely saving only for the night of the party because I can't be having a dead body prop just lying around my house in the meantime till then. Like I do not want anybody to call the police to my house. And then other than that, I just still have a lot more of the spider webbing stuff and little plastic spiders that I can just kind of put, like I said, I want to put some on the stairs, up on the balcony, just hang it from everywhere. And then that'll pretty much be the finished look. Hopefully I can get all that stuff done just you know, for the party at least. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for my next few vlogs. I'm gonna be showing everything about me and Zaya's costumes. I'm doing a vampire costume and fairy princess costume. And then of course I'm gonna show you like the rest of the DIYs and how everything else turns out with the decorations. And then I still have to show you everything for the actual party as far as the Halloween themed food and drinks and everything. So I'm gonna be vlogging the whole rest of everything. So just stay tuned, just stay tuned because I have a lot more coming. And in the meantime, you should definitely follow me on Instagram, but especially TikTok because I'm going to be posting a lot of like sneak peeks and mini tutorials and mini recipes and like little blurbs of content. You'll get the content quicker on TikTok. So definitely follow me over there. But that is all I have for this video. Wish me luck with the rest of my DIYs and I'll see you in the next one.